All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second edition of the March to the Edge webinar series. Uh, this webinar is going to focus on addressing the challenges of both monitoring and control at the edge. And if you're new to the series, uh, the idea is that this will be geared more toward a, a general discussion about the topics uh, involving the edge uh, with various industry experts, as opposed to having a, an hour long commercial about various products. Um, we will also have members of the Kepler team monitoring the chat and the question and answer section, should you have any comments or questions uh, related to the topics. And uh, we will address those comments or those questions at the end here. Um, and just as a friendly reminder, please put yourself on mute. Um, and with that being said, let's move over and let's meet our panelists. So first up from Logic, uh, Kepware reseller, we have President uh, Dave Van Landingham. David, welcome. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate being here. Glad, uh, glad to join you. Yeah, glad you can make it. And from Stratus, uh, we have Kepware's newest hardware partner. Uh, we have Senior Director of Product Management, Barry Delacies. Sorry about that, Barry. Barry Delacies. <laughs> How are you doing, Barry? No problem, Kyle. Uh, good morning, to everybody, and thank you to, uh, for having me today. Yeah, absolutely. And I will be your host, uh, Kyle Carew, Partner Enablement Engineer from Kepware. So I did mention earlier that this wouldn't be an hour long commercial, but bear with us, you know, even though none of us have sales necessarily in our titles, uh, we do have to talk about our companies in our products just a little bit. So, you know, let's be real, which webinar slash podcast doesn't have ads or anything these days, right? So uh, first up, Stratus. So Barry, could you walk us through a little bit uh, about Stratus? Sure. Yeah. So for those of you that may not be familiar with us, uh, what we do at Stratus is pretty simple. Uh, we create zero touch edge computing that's simple to deploy, protected from failures and threats and autonomous to manage. Uh, our, our infrastructure and our products combine the best practices, best practices from both the IT and the OT world to uh, house and protect uh, your most critical applications. We've been around for about 41 years. And as you can see from this slide, um, we have a very broad set of customers that range from very small to very large. Um, and we serve a ver variety of industries um, from you know, manufacturing to retail, uh, financial services. And uh, we have over 25,000 active customers uh, that we support today. Awesome. Thank you, Barry. And later on, we'll be learning a little bit about their newest offering, the ZTC Edge. Um, and then, David, over to you. Uh, could you just talk a little bit about your company logic? Sure, yeah, we're a distributor that located, I'm actually in Kansas City, but we cover Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, Southern Illinois, and we, we've been working with Kepware for a very long time, maybe 25 years. I remember uh, when, when you guys first started going with uh, Mark Hensley, so it's been a fun journey to see all the things Kepware has been doing. So basically this is our 40th year also. I didn't know Stratus started about the same time we did. Um, and uh, you know, we're focused on kind of a broad uh, portfolio of automation products, but, but do a lot in terms of software and hardware for these kinds of applications that we're talking about today. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, and it's uh, it's interesting too to be able to, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. But the whole ecosystem uh, that Kepler relies on is is huge, and especially for our resellers who have been around for a lot longer than we have. It's it's very very valuable to have. Um, and of course, a little bit about Kepler. Um, you know, we we focus on in industrial connectivity. That's that's what we've always done. Um, you know, started in the OT market very much of hey, I need to get this. You know, these PLCs talking these particular languages over to my SCADA system or over to my HMI system. And throughout the years, that has actually transitioned a little bit more into the IoT space, um, or even in some cases, the, the IT space. But really, at the core of it all, it's still focused on that connectivity. That's that's what we do best. We, we do all the drivers. We do the OPC connectivity. We do database connectivity. That's what it's all about. Um, the whole reason for this webinar and the whole reason for uh, some of the, this ecosystem that I'll, I'll talk about in a second here is uh, for one of our newest offerings, which is the ThingWorks Kepware Edge product. Uh, now, what this is, is a newer product from Kepware that is focused really around edge connectivity. And we'll probably dive a little bit into like, well, what is the edge? Like, you know, it's, it's very open-ended, but the idea here is it's a Linux-based derivative of 
the broader Kep server EX that you've grown to know and love. And really, it's just a it's a subset of drivers. Um, it's the Allen Bradley Control Logic Siemens uh, Ethernet and the Modbus TCP Ethernet drivers all packaged together with an OPC UA interface and a means to get data up to the cloud via MQTT or the thing works always on protocol. So all that packages in a way that makes sense for scalability and some of these larger distributed architectures. So we'll get into that a little bit, uh, a little bit later. But again, really quick, um, I, I touched on this a bit where, hey, you know, Kepware really relies on this ecosystem here for a number of reasons. One is based of what we do, again, just that industrial connectivity, while that's a very important part of the overall solution, Kepware will never be the entire solution, right? It's, it's hey, we, we, we need devices to connect up to, we need hardware to host our software on, and we also need a place to send the software. And then even now we need maybe a cloud platform to host our software on. So we really rely on this ecosystem. And as we move toward the edge, one of the things we realized was that, you know, we had to start answering a question we've never really had to answer before, which was, hey, what can I deploy your software on, <laughs> right? In the past has been, ah, as long as you've got a laptop or computer that's not running Windows XP or Windows 95, like you're probably good. That's no longer the case with edge hardware. It's smaller um, and then the, the RAM and all that other stuff becomes a lot more important. So we figured, hey, instead of trying to come up with these you know, specifications and really important, wouldn't it make sense to partner with folks like Stratus uh, to offer this sort of combined solution where the hardware and the software has been tested together. Um, so that's where that hardware uh, partnership comes into play. And you can find all of our other partners on Kepler's website under the ThingWorks Kepler Edge section. And of course, <laughs> from both Stratus and from Kepware, we, re, you know, we really rely on folks like Dave and his company to sell all of our stuff. So really there's, there's this whole eco, ecosystem set up to help um, sell this complete solution and to help solve problems. All right, commercial's over. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on to the meat of this discussion. Uh, so challenges around the edge. Um, so we've got three sort of main points that we thought might make sense to maybe uh, to dive into a little deeper. So um, Barry, I'm actually going to call on you. Do you want to talk a little bit about reliability, availability, and uptime and why that is a challenge? Sure. Uh, so, you know, recently we've seen a lot more uh, demand or drive towards, um, you know, technology words like industry 4.0 or digitalization. And, you know, with that, people are looking for faster data analysis, lower latency, you know, more reliable uh, delivery of capabilities, uh, especially uh, in extreme proximity to, you know, the operation of the process. And, you know, ultimately, and this is where I think the Stratus and Kepler uh, partnership uh, comes into play, what's driving that is a lot more of the aggregation of data from various sources, you know, transforming that data into business information and then delivering it to the right people at the right time. Um, so, you know, certainly then your downtime of your applications, of your infrastructure, you know, is something that, you know, most, if not all manufacturers cannot afford. And, you know, it will ultimately have an impact to productivity, profitability, you know, customer experience, you know, even potentially a brand uh, reputation. Um, and we've even seen that as more of these uh, processes are being digitalized and, um, you know, the, the automation uh, world is, is moving towards, um, you know, some of this reliance on data, downtime can even become more expensive um, as these manufacturing you know, processes and lines re rely on that increase of uh, automation and uh, integration of all the data sources. Um, so, you know, this is why, you know, we look at downtime as a real problem in that uh, without having something that is, you know, resilient, uh, able to recover from downtown situations can give you the ability to um, you know, be deployed in mission critical applications or even hazardous environments and you know, really resilient to the different failures that can happen uh, across the line uh, really becomes important. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Barry. Yeah, and, and we're going to dive into this a little bit more a little bit later on. Um, and, you know, Dave, I guess I'll call on you here. And this is, I think, been the favorite buzzword of the last five or six years or so, but can you maybe dive into a little bit more around that, the challenges of the ITOT convergence? Sure, Kyle. Yeah, I, I feel like it is 
always a conversation and really it's you know the IT group um, and the engineering group trying to figure out how to solve these applications that ultimately come down to operational issues and you know what we see I feel like the sort of best in class type of uh, organizations tend the IT groups tend to provide the infrastructure so that involves networking and the computing power often these days it's virtualization solutions so kind of the whole infrastructure and then when the engineering group is able to uh, take care of the applications that run on that infrastructure I feel like that combination if they work together it really tends to work well um, but there's there's definitely a lot of overlap regarding, you know, all kinds of things that they have to work together on to, to not have conflict. But we, we see, you know, there's there's a lot of overlap. Sometimes you have SCADA people in IT groups and you have IT groups in, in engineering groups. And there's just a lot of different ways to skin that cat. But we, we definitely see that there's overlap between solving all the operational issues, you know, on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting too, where I, I think, you know, we'll say even maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, like eight years ago, the, the ITOT convergence at that time was more, hey, we're trying to implement, you know, Ethernet IP onto the plant floor, we're moving from these old, you know, DH plus or RS-232 uh, serial communications out on the floor, we're trying to go Ethernet and Back then, that was the that was the ITOT convergence was all these OT folks learning the difference between an unmanaged switch and a managed switch. But now, it's more focused around, you know, I, I would think like IT trying to understand some of this OT data, and then OT trying to figure out these infrastructures and how to architect these infrastructures to support these larger enterprise. Um, type of uh, type of architectures. And that actually leads me into the, the demand for digitization, right? So it's, and I want to be clear here, it's, there's sort of this difference, and it's a small difference between digitization and, and um, man, so many buzzwords, <laughs> digitization and, uh, you know, digital transformation, where digitization is more, hey, we have a bunch of old charts where we have the sneaker net thing of writing down values and, and moving them around. There's a demand for <laughs> making that data more digitally available but really that's a part of the digital transformation which is hey we just need more data in order to make better business decisions and better engineering decisions um, for the process as a whole across our entire enterprise so there's a lot more demand for all of that and, and um, you know kyle oh, i think i i often hear it talked about you know in the past it used to be called paperless you know people people want to go paperless so that they can get to the information at any point in time and i feel like that's kind of the the big part of digitization is to is to really have the information available for all the different types of consumers and that's the big challenge i feel like for so many customers yeah and that's that's actually a good point in a <clears throat> a good transition over and dave you would know this very well but um, if we look at the use case for, like, say, oil and gas, um, and I'm, I'm definitely going to have you elaborate a, a little bit more here, but um, in general, you know, I, I think what we look at from a traditional setup is, is something like you see on the screen now, where, you know, it used to be the central pulling agent or central pulling engine, excuse me, um, in some central location, I'm going to be very generic and say, let's say it's Houston, very original, I know, but okay, there's a, there's a pulling engine in Houston. Uh, it's reaching out to these 100 well sites that are spread out and very dispersed away from the central pulling agent engine. I don't know why I keep saying agent <laughs> engine. Um, and it's over these sort of not very robust networks. Maybe it's uh, radio. Maybe it's, you know, it's not a great network. So you're going to have latency uh, in the collection of the data. You might have bad data. It might take a while to even realize that your data is bad or you're not getting communications. Um, that can be a big problem, especially depending on where you are in the oil and gas space, whether it's midstream or upstream. Um, and Dave, I'll probably ask you to, <laughs> in a bit here to maybe uh, elaborate a bit on that. But the whole idea there is you had this one central polling engine that wasn't great because you were trying to reach out to these devices, you know, let's say, every couple hundred milliseconds, but they're miles and miles and miles away. And, and that can be pretty tough. 
Um, so Dave, do, do you see this more, this architecture more in midstream and upstream? Where, where do you usually find an architecture like this? Yeah, I feel like this has been the traditional architecture for years. And I'd say for most of the applications that we know of or customers doing this, this is both in production. So you have well fields, as you've shown sort of on the left side, and then in midstream where you have pipelines, either liquid or gas, we see the, the station level control um, than having, you know, typically a WAN connection out. And when you talked about, you know, all the, you talked about milliseconds, and uh, I would say many of these applications, they're hopeful that they can be talking in terms of minutes, not milliseconds. And that's really the big difference. Mm. And especially when you end up with, as you talked about, a mixed architecture where, you know, you might have a cellular connection, you might have a VSAT connection, you have some dedicated radios, um, you have internet provided in all kinds of different ways to, to these uh, remote sites. So you do have a very complex solution set that, that happens in a WAN that, you know, might go from Texas to Maine, um, all, all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that, again, and this, I would, is pretty common, right? Like this, this might just be one small well site, but you, you look at the number and all of a sudden you start to see some of the challenges you, um, you kind of outlined there. And um, so the solution really, really here, and Barry, I'm going to ask you to maybe in, in just a second, maybe elaborate a little bit more of where Stratus fits into this. But the idea is to push some of that data collection closer to the device itself. And in this case, in, in, in this scenario, that is our edge. It is at that well site. It is at that device as close as you can possibly be. And the reason for that is that polling engine is now moved much closer to the device. So you're pinging and you're, you're pulling that device a lot faster than, you know, as Dave said, uh, maybe a few minutes, hopefully you're, you're getting this in the true, hey, millisecond fashion, but with something like Kepler Edge, where you're taking and pulling that data and then transforming it into something like, let's say, MQTT, which relies on a published subscribe type of um, you know, architecture is really you're only sending that data up to some sort of broker, central broker somewhere um, when the data changes or when it's available for it. So it becomes a much more reliable way to send data. And then additionally, you know, MQTT, um, which is one of the things that Kepler Edge can convert that data to, is extremely lightweight. So it's a lot easier to send across these very, you know, not super robust uh, networks. So with that, um, you know, Barry, there's there's a whole bunch of Stratus stuff <laughs> thrown out throughout this architecture. Do you think you could elaborate a little bit on sort of where these come into play? Yeah. So I think you know Dave's analogy or his uh, his use of the word paperless, I think, speaks to you know ultimately what's happening is now you're seeing much more data in a digital format being created, you know, at, at the edge or at these different locations. And with that data being created, you, you obviously have a reliance on having, you know, higher increased computing power, more storage, you know, more capabilities to do something with that data. Because after all, if you're capturing it or you're, you're creating it, you don't do anything with it, you know, what's the point? And when you look at this data and in, in, in what it ultimately gets used for, it's, as I said before, it's, it, it's being used by operators, by, by used by people who can make decisions and they become more reliant now on data that's available to them either on screens or, you know, in alerts or, or you know, other more, more, uh, more modern uh, capabilities. And so with, with, with this sort of, you know, creation of more data, this needs to be able to capture it all, process it, store it at the edge, and then, you know, uh, uh, display it or feed it up to somebody. Um, you know, certainly you want to have something that you can trust um, in terms of, you know, housing those applications and protecting those applications. And that's where as you see the DTC Edge platform, our, our, our most recent uh, product comes into play. Um, you know, so, so, that, so now, 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 now we're addressing the problem of collecting data from the different sources. We're making it available uh, closer to where the data is being originated, you know, where, where somebody who can make a decision about the data um, is actually located. Um, and that's great, we've solved that, but you still have this need to be able to send the data up to the cloud, as you said, and that cloud could be, you know, a public cloud or it could be more of an enterprise, uh, because you still have this this reliance on being able to do reporting or analytics or you know, maybe you want to compare 
trends and look for anomalies across all of your sites. And that's where you know, the, the, the scale of what you're doing, both in terms of the amount of data, the, the, the processing of the data, um, you know, all that's gonna grow and, and, and evolve. And that's where, um, you know, obviously Kepware, Kep, Kep Server, Stratus is FT Server, you know, all these different platforms can kind of come into play. And this is, I think it's part of the value proposition of the, of, of the two different um, technologies here because we can scale all the way down to at the edge where it's being originated, all the way up to more of the central location where you're collecting all the data, you're aggregating it, and now you're doing more long time long-term analytics that maybe doesn't, doesn't require the same um, real-time decision-making, but still has an importance on being able to process all that information and turn it into valuable insights. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. And, and one of the things too, and I think the three of us sort of chatted about this before and, and Dave brought up a really good point of, you know, with, with oil and gas, there's, there's more than one way to architect something in with some of the robustness that you get with, with Stratus, um, you know, and let, let, let's be honest, it, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than a traditional, um, you know, industrial computer, I, IPC sort of thing. Um, so I guess, Dave, my question to you and Barry, I guess, is does ZTC Edge necessarily make sense where, hey, this is going to be at every single well site, or is there maybe a better way to architect that? Yeah, and if yeah. I just jump in at this point, you know, I think uh, ZTC Edge is, is, as Barry had pointed out, you know, a very robust system. And, and when you're comparing it to just, you know, putting out maybe an industrial computer, it, it really is a, a step change, both in terms of reliability, but then that comes at a price point. So, you know, what we see, particularly in oil and gas, when we talk about upstream, is that no longer is it a single well site that these companies are deploying. So we do work with a company called Noble Energy and you know, they, they don't drill one. Yeah, this is, their, uh, this is what they would call an eco node. And I think this is a relatively small one compared to what they're doing today, but they'll have up to 32 wells that essentially come to one point, one physical point on the ground. And so it doesn't really look like you know, one well with a tank battery anymore, it looks like a whole plant. And I've been to a facility that, you know, I'd say is four or five times larger than the one you're even showing here. Um, but that's really their, you know, all the horizontal drilling then allows them to, to use that as a central point and go out in a very wide geography and uh, put a pretty small footprint relative to what they would have done with 32 wells previously. So anyway, the, all that being said that, uh, you know, this is more like a processing plant in terms of scope and scale. So they really do, it's very important for them to have visibility into all 32 wells. And that's where things like ZTC Edge can come into play because they really do need that reliability and robustness for these kinds of applications. Mm -hmm. And uh, Barry, I'm going to set you up here. <laughs> so, um, you know, as Dave said, there's a lot of different ways to do this. And ZTC Edge and, and Stratus in general definitely has its place. Um, and we keep making the comparison. And, and I think it's important to know, like, yeah, ZTC Edge, the FT server that Stratus has, it, it is not an industrial PC. There is way more beyond that. And really, that's geared towards solving that reliability, the availability and the uptime challenge that we see of, hey, we're, we're now taking this centralized polling engine and we're pushing it toward the edge where, yes, there are a lot of benefits, but you need to make sure that all these things are you know, <laughs> reliable, available and, and continuously run. So I, I guess I'll talk a little, or could you talk a little bit about how Stratus approaches that challenge and how the ZTC edge can help with that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we use the term simple protected autonomous to describe, you know, sort of all of our product lines. Um, you know, if you think about where Stratus started 40 years ago, we actually were in the telecommunications world and, you know, our, our products at the time were being deployed and ultimately uh, managed um, by linemen. Um, you know, so this idea of simple really was part of our, our sort of beginnings where we, what we've strived to do is take some of the best IT technologies, you know, like uh, virtualization, like cybersecurity features that are all integrated into the solution, um, you know, like some of the um, system management capabilities we have and make them integrated into the hardware 
in a more turnkey fashion. You know, I use the analogy of uh, it's kind of like the Apple model versus the Android model, right? So we purposely built it for OT applications, OT users, and really tried to make it simple and easy to use. You know, in terms of protection, we, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about the, the, the downtime and, you know, this is really where our whole portfolio of products can really scale, scale uh, very nicely in terms of how critical those applications are um, and what is that sort of tolerance of, of uh, downtime that people have. You know, for some people, no downtime is absolutely required, regulatory, compliance, you know, other reasons. For others, there may be some latitude where they could be okay with, you know, seconds or even minutes of, 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 of uh, recovery time. Um, and, you know, we have a, a portfolio that, that, that allows for that. And then, you know, when we think about autonomous, again, going back to that telecommunications example from, from the beginning, you know, one of the things that we, our company built in initially was this idea that these systems could be remotely monitored and managed so that, um, you know, it was part of our, our solution, part of our value proposition where Stratus can keep an eye on these systems for you so you don't have to. You know, it's that whole, you know, commercial, you know, what, you know, what is your kid doing at 2 a.m., right? Um, you know, what is your what is your computing infrastructure doing um, overnight, right? We have pe people that can ultimately look at uh, our, 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 our solutions uh, 24 by seven. Um, and if we see something that's wrong, we can begin to respond to it. And in many cases, we are able to actually, um, you know, predictive in a predictive ma manner or proactive manner, um, respond to it. So this idea of, you know, having infrastructure that's reliable, you know, uh, or simple to use, you know, uh, protected from downtime and threats and autonomous really is sort of core of, of who we are. And as you said, what differentiates us from, you know, more of the standard off the shelf um, computing platforms. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And th there's a lot of value to be had with that ZTC edge. And, um, you know, as Dave said, that it, it, it might not necessarily make sense to have one at every single well site, but it may, it depends on how critical, how crucial is that data and how crucial is it that you maintain um you know 100 percent uptime or whatever that may be um and then with that being said one of the things that now becomes interesting and i think this sort of is where a lot of companies are at at this point is that this whole scalability and despite you know my my uh, best intentions scalable has now become a bit of a buzzword but it, but it is kind of important to look at and I think, you know, the way I think about this is we look at it where I look at it from two different perspectives. I look at it from the software scalability where, you know, in my opinion, and maybe this is just because of the software background that I have, it's a little bit easier to scale. You know, we have things now like containerization and orchestration um, that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, but software will forever provide us insights, right? We have a lot of data that comes out of that software. What's the time? Hey, there's this error coming here. Uh, we have visibility into it. Um, but on the downside, you know, in order to get that, you have to have that underlying infrastructure in order to deploy it. And we still have to have hardware to host it. Um, and then from the hardware side of things, you know, we don't necessarily have a ton of insight traditionally. And that's, I think, where Stratus really can help play into that is you guys do provide a lot of um, insights into what is going on with the hardware, um, but the, you still can't get around the manual labor involved in, in commissioning it. You still need to do that. But with that being said, you know, if, if you look at that, that larger well site that we looked at earlier, like ideally, if I'm a lineman, like I would want to go in there, set it up once, and then only go out to fix that particular box um, when I have to, and having the information um, that I do have going out there in order to fix it. Um, so Barry, how does, I think we've talked about this before, but you had mentioned Stratus having an internal OPC UA server with it. Can you, can you maybe talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So, uh, so as we looked at, you know, our products as I said before, looking at how can we make our systems, you know, more turnkey for OT, we also realized that there's, there's still an IT uh, management that ha happens. And Dave touched on this earlier about, you know, really where that OT and IT convergence happens is when they focus on the operations. And, you know, again, as you said, the insights into the, the infrastructure, the hardware, the operating system, you know, even the applications is critical. What we realize is that, um, that in some cases, it may be ne needed for both parties to have visibility into what's going on, right? IT may be looking at sort of the hardware, the operating system, and they may want to have um, the, the data served up in the traditional protocols that they, they, they support, things like SNMP or, um, 
you know, uh, REST APIs, things like that. But a lot of a lot of OT applications, especially where you have you know some sort of HMI, um, you know, uh, visible, um, having an OPC UA server built into the product actually allows them to now get the valuable insights about what's going on from a you know from a health and a status perspective, and having it served up in that same screen that they're over that they're looking at for their overall process. Um, so that was one of the things that we felt was important when we launched this, this product was to be able to not only serve the needs of the IT folks, but also, you know, have those integrations and those interoperabilities with some of the more IT protocols and applications um, so that we could make sure that the right information gets to the right people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I brought up OPC way uh, a little bit on purpose here. And um, Dave, I'm, I'm going to turn to you a little bit too, is, you know, OPC in general in the past has very much been a, uh, you know, heavy in the OT world. It, it was necessary to move forward um, with, uh, with a lot of the technology. And then now what we're seeing is that you have these big players like uh, Microsoft Azure and AWS and, and Google's IoT cloud, like actually becoming members of the OPC foundation. Um, which, which is huge, and it's really helping to bridge that IDOT gap. But could you maybe, you know, I we mentioned this a little bit before, but maybe let's have a discussion here about, you know, a little bit more in depth around some of this ITOT uh, challenges that we're seeing. Yeah, and you know, o OPC DA has been around for a long time, and and DA relied on you know, a Microsoft technology that was based originally on COM and then DCOM later. And, uh, you know, not super firewall friendly, kind of painful if you try to deploy it across a, a lot of firewalls or, or cloud solutions and so forth. So it really didn't work very well in those well site applications that where we talked about on a WAN um, because of so many uh, communication problems. But OPC UA, on the other hand, was really designed to be able to navigate all of the you know, complexity of these modern technologies that you know, could be a whole combination of you know, cell VSAT, you know, all the different things that I mentioned before. So you know, we just see uh, the, the cloud people really wanting to embrace this so that the industrial uh, groups have a much better seamless solution to be able to get there their data forward. You know, one of, one of the things, Kyle, too, that when we were talking about robustness and so forth, um, uh, a question came in on the chat about store and forward with respect to that. And, uh, you know, a lot of these protocols do support time stamping at the device that's doing the collecting and then being able to have that, if you lose communication, being able to have that data time stamped and then put stored locally on uh, you know, the ZTC edge, for instance, and then when communication is restored, going ahead and uh, pushing that data with the timestamps back up to the, uh, to the host applications. And that's a huge portion, that's a huge way to you know, ensure far more data integrity in the long run. So you know, we, we see MQTT and OPC UA um, really having a lot of uh, better connectivity and a lot more robustness regarding the data for these for these kinds of applications. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah, and that's, that's a great question and a great point about store and forward, so thank you for addressing that. Um, Barry, I, I guess I'll ask you, since you brought it up a little bit on the last slide here, but um, you, know, you had mentioned some of the features that were built into uh, ZTC Edge and FT Server were more uh, focused on the IT uh, personnel. And what I thought was interesting was, you know, when we look at IT and OT, their priorities are a little bit different from one another. So OT, you know, I guess you could say both are really focused on uptime, but uptime <laughs> means different things to those groups, right? Uptime for the OT personnel is, hey, am I continuing to make widgets? Am I continuing production? And then with IT, it might be, hey, and this is going to be very, very reduced, but like, hey, is email still up? Is my internal sales force um, you know, program still up and running? Uh, both very important, but both very different. So can you maybe talk a little bit more toward what some of those IT specific, um, I guess, where that IT specific data that is now available in 
um, ZTC Edge, me meaning like some of the, uh, you know, what can you get out of that OPC UA server that IT would like to see? Yeah, so I mean, I, I think, you know, going back to kind of the, uh, the it depends uh, uh, analogy of, you know, a lot of these deployments, um, in some cases, we see this sort of split where IT is sort of, I think, as, as David mentioned, you know, op managing the operations of the hardware, the, 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 uh, the, op the base operating system, and then they're leaving engineering or the OT, um, you know, team to manage sort of the applications. And, and I think, you know, so an IT person, they want to be able to get sort of certain uh, data from a, a health uh, alerts, alarms. Uh, maybe even logs um, so they could you know have it for either uh, regulatory reasons or forensics if something was to happen down the road um, so being able to you know have those integrations really is i would say almost required anytime uh, there's a you know an it function that's involved um, in, in the mix um, you know so 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 i think i think that sort of comes into it i think you know the other thing just to kind of touch on from a priority perspective i you know i think you know you're right in the sense that people look at uptime um, you know, that, that's ultimately what they want to they want to see. But I think the way they go about it is what what varies. And, and I think the most common example that I'll sort of uh, hit on is things like, you know, patching, right? You know, if, if I'm an IT, you know, I'm 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 as a, sort of the mindset that I want to push down patches as they're available. Um, and we know that from you know an operational perspective or an industrial perspective, patches if they're not fully vetted and tested. Um, can actually have very harmful um, impacts. Um, so this idea of being able to have more, you know, either more of a set it and forget it mentality, or let's make sure that we qualify and make sure that it's something that won't break something within the um, within the uh, the process, right? Because unlike IT, where if things go down, you have a disruption of of a service or an application. In the OT world, if things go down, you can actually have a safety incident. Um, and and so so I think that those are some of the things that that uh, I would say are Kind of fall into that different priorities again i think they all they all have the right mindset they have the right intentions it's just kind of how they're approaching it and what lens they're applying um to the uh to the operation definitely yeah and that, that's in you, you brought my favorite sort of point that I, I tried to make as, as much as possible when when having these conversations between the two groups is you know it, it's you know as you said if communication goes down or gets disrupted in the IT space, like, yeah, okay, Salesforce might be down, email might be down, maybe you can't print something, like, it's it's probably going to be okay, and then, you know, the, the downtime threshold is probably minutes or maybe even hours for IT where that's acceptable, whereas on the OT side, like, if you miss, you know, even a second or two, that can be extremely harmful. It might be, a, you know, it might shut down production or even worse, it, it could potentially be a safety issue if that isn't designed correctly. So it's, it's you know, it, this lens is very different and they're both, as you said, they're both well-intended, but sometimes they get a little, a little convoluted here. Um, so Dave, I, and I guess I'll ask you and I'll, See if I can get you to transition us here, but you know, throughout the years, we've sort of seen different technology being adopted by both groups. Um, I think originally it started, as I said earlier, like you know, getting Ethernet and managed switches out in the plant floor was very much a, a big thing, um, and then now it seems to be geared more toward the IoT side of things, moving things up to the cloud. Do you see any sort of technology that um, is, you know, what technology do you think is next that the OT space is going to adapt um, from the IT space? Yeah, well, you know, we, we've talked about a lot of things and, you know, obviously with Kepware Edge, it's running on Linux. And so one of the technologies that we see, um, you know, deployed in Linux applications in the OT space is the use of Docker containers. And, uh, you know, I, I see this as an IT uh, solution that is used in data centers and other other applications that are typical in IT and is really becoming adopted in the OT world to be able to deploy, spe especially to remote sites or to large numbers of uh, devices, being able to use a Docker solution to uh, host the applications in in kind of a very IT centric virtualization type solution. So if you're not familiar with Docker, it's, it's kind of a self-contained um, set of code, hence they call it a container that gets pushed down and can run autonomously 
um, on the, the Linux operating system. So it's definitely an interesting technology. Um, I was really glad to see uh, Kepler support that with their Edge product. And uh, obviously on the Linux platform, it's supported with the Stratus solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, my, uh, and I, I guess I'll preference this with uh, some of my favorite explanation here. So, you know, here at Kepware, the application engineering team and, and some of the other engineering, or I guess customer focus uh, pre-sales teams are lucky in the sense that we get exposed to a lot of different technologies just because of the way Kepware is set up. You know, we interact with databases, we interact with the cloud, we interact with various types of SCADA systems. So we're very exposed to a lot of different technologies. And with that comes a little bit of skill sets, but at the end of the day, and this is sort of my preface here is like, you know, we are experts in communication and in industrial communication. So, hey, if you need to know something really specific about Modbus or OPC UA, yeah, we got you. Um, you know, databases and clouds infrastructures, like we know enough. Um, not certainly experts. So I to say that at Kepware, we're very subject matter aware of a lot of different things, but not necessarily subject matter experts. Now, with that being said, you know, uh, the way I sort of look at containers, and this is a very simple explanation, but if you, if you look at a VM, it's pretty heavy, right? It's virtual, but it still has an operating system. It still has a whole bunch of other things and weight that aren't super necessary for, let's say, even just Kepler itself to run on. So all of a sudden you're you have this um, virtual image that's taking up a lot of resources on your ZTC edge that may not be necessary for Kepware to run. So containerization essentially will trim out the fat from that. Um, again, that's a very simple explanation. I would highly encourage folks who are just hearing the word container or containerization now to go, go to Docker, uh, their website, check it out, read a couple of articles. It, it really is awesome technology. And, at least from our perspective, from Kepler's perspective, we see this as the next step of going going to be able to, you know, scale uh, to the masses for some of this technology. Um, and of course, with something like ZTC Edge, you can host. Right, I guess this is the the other good point too is with all that fat from those VMs trimmed down, you can have a lot more applications in a much smaller space. Um, so Barry, you know, I, I guess I'll ask you. So. With the ZTC Edge, you know, obviously the idea here is, hey, you can host um, Kepware or some other data server on ZTC Edge. What do you think, or could you speculate as to some other softwares that you could potentially host on ZTC Edge? Yeah, so I, I'd say we see a lot of people that are starting to put, um, in addition to sort of the, the connectivity software like Kepware, uh, we're starting to see people do things like um, you know, SCADA applications, HMI applications, there's uh, people, you know, bringing in some maybe local historians for, you know, the data collection use case that, 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 that uh, David mentioned before. Um, you know, I would say, you know, we're starting to see people begin to tease out some of the more advanced um, edge analytics use cases. Um, a lot of, I would say that it's very early right now, people sort of piloting it, trying to figure out what they got. Um, but, you know, that, that's sort of one of the benefits of, of our platform is that it is, um, it is scalable and extensible. So you can, you know, ultimately, you know, start small and then build up as you go. Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, is, and we're going to talk about this a little bit after the slide, but, um, you know, the, the previous slide showed a very simple uh, high level overview of Docker. It, it's pretty simple in its setup, um, which is great. And I think that's a great way to start. But if you're really looking for the larger wide enterprise um, sort of solution, you might look to something like using Azure as your underlying infrastructure um, to host a bunch of these different things. And this is a very generic sort of um, architecture, but you know, coming up in the May timeframe, looking around at product management, no one's holding me to it, uh, the, the May timeframe, um, Kepler Edge will actually be available on the Azure Marketplace. So you, you'll be able to deploy and download using the Azure infrastructure. You'll be able to deploy uh, ThingWorks Kepler Edge um, out to where, you, where it needs to go. And then you might do some things like utilize um, Azure's IoT Edge module to do some pretty nifty things uh, with OPC UA and, and others. And 
again, this is a it's a great solution. But to be fair to some, this is very much the Ferrari when they just need a, a Toyota or something like that. Um, so keep in mind, this is out there. If you are interested in this, we can definitely talk to you more about that. If you're interested in the Docker solution, yeah, we can talk to you about that as well. Now, being completely transparent, um, you know, this is all great, but let's be real that this is market textured. So I, I'm going to ask Barry and Dave, uh, and I guess I'll, I'll add some context here as well. Why aren't we seeing this being, you know, uh, adopted everywhere? Why, why is this still sort of market texture and not real life? Yeah, if I, uh, I'll jump in here, Kyle. I, you know, I do appreciate it. And as we were, you know, talking about this earlier, it, it, I definitely was pointing out that people, that's, it's pretty aspirational. You know, your previous slide, I would put it in the, uh, companies are really wanting to do that, but there's not very many off the shelf production ready, industrial focused applications to do those, um, those things that you're talking about. You know, most people host today, they're hosted in the cloud. You need connectivity and, and really that is happening at the cloud, but not pushed down to the edge very often. Certainly Microsoft and AWS have solutions to be able to push them down to the device level. And I think there are, you know, certainly there are players in the world doing it. We just don't see it as widespread in the industrial markets because they're not really application developers you know, using all those native tools that are part of Azure AWS. So I feel like the market is kind of waiting for the, the players that are in this space or new players to come out that really focus on those kinds of edge applications. And, you know, it's, it's exciting to see in the future, but we're uh, just not quite there yet because, uh, you know, I think it's, it's still cutting edge software and the industrial space is, um, you know, pretty focused on solving operational issues today rather than developing a lot of software. Mm -hmm. uh, Barry, same, same question to you. Why, again, a little bit of speculation here, but why don't you think this is being adopted uh, a little bit more widespread at the moment? Uh, I mean, I agree with you know, everything that Dave said. I, you know, I think um, you know, people are, it comes down to focus and priorities and, and maybe a little bit of skill sets as well. You know, I think, you know, I also think things like COVID um, have also had an impact as people have sort of, you know, they've had to shift their focus and priorities and focus on, you know, how do we remain operational and how do we sort of evolve in, in a new world of being remote? Um, so, you know, I, I think this is a matter of not if, it's a matter of when people get to this point. And, you know, I think it's, it's going to be, uh, you know, at a point people will start seeing it. And then I think it's going to be, you know, gang buses at that point in time. I think it's, just, you know, the, the, the power of being able to do some of the stuff, being able to scale out, get, you know, re really be able to, you know, get some of the benefits out of it, I think will drive people in this direction. But I think right now it's just, they don't know what they, they don't know what they don't know. And they've had to focus and prioritize on other things um, right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess from, from our point too, from, from a Kepler standpoint, I think a lot of it has to do with just adaptation of the overall larger infrastructure. You know, and I think we, <clears throat> we touched on this at various points throughout the webinar, but um, it's great that Kepler has this capability and it's great that we have our stuff containerized, but, you know, we still need, we rely on our partners to help us either host it or to help deploy it. Um, and I just think it's, it's a matter of, hey, it's, it's newer technology to the OT space. Um, and it's, it's a big lift. You know, it's not like, oh, we'll just buy this new, whatever, IO car for PLC and hey, we're, we're up and running and look how cool this is. Um, maybe you can do that, but it's tough to scale that out. And what we've seen quite often here and why we're trying to encourage our, uh, our customers to really take a focus on like enterprise wide and larger connectivity earlier in the project is it's really easy, especially with Kepware to do a very fast proof of concept system. I mean, I can't tell you the number of demonstrations I've done where I've said, hey, yep, we're going to go from this Modbus device and then push it to Azure in less than five minutes. Like we can do it. The mm -hmm. problem is scaling that out, getting the infrastructure and being able to maintain that um, it is, is challenging. And I just don't know if we're there yet. We're getting close. We're getting very close. And I would encourage you know, folks listening on the call to utilize that ecosystem, whether it be Kepler's ecosystem or, or whoever else, but 
find the right partner, whether that's Logic, whether that's Stratus, whether it's Kepler, hopefully all three, <laughs> but rely on those partners to help come in and help design the solution and help look at some of these pitfalls that you can potentially get yourself into. Um, anything else on this one, guys, before we, before we hop on or hop over to the next slide? Taking silence is a no. Um, yeah, so oh, I didn't realize this one was animated. Uh, so just kind of wrapping up here. Um, well, I guess, yeah, you know, there, there is this demand for digitalization out there. Um, we're really seeing edge computing and, and things like the Stratus um, products. There's more of a need for that, especially down the edge. But again, that needs to be simple. There needs to be a way to be able to do this and have in an easy way to have that availability and have that uptime. And uh, of course, you know, with the ITOT convergence, like you have to appeal to everyone, get a larger team involved, get your players and get the solution providers involved early. Um, and really when you're looking at the edge, just know that there is a much higher emphasis on that reliability, that availability and that uptime. Um, and then finally here, Barry, I'll, I'll turn to you if, if you want to just do one last one last sales pitch, I guess, uh, for for the ZTC Edge and, and what that can offer. Yeah, no, I, again, you know, I, I think it's it's our most recent uh, product, and you know, really taking a lot of those best of class IT capabilities and bringing it to industrial edge, really helping people uh, do more closer to where data is being um, created. Um, where the process lives and really enabling OT to sort of, um, you know, get more out of their, their infrastructure and take more control over their process. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. And from the Kepler side, again, it's, it's, <laughs> we're the driver company, we're the, we're the OPC guys, we're the uh, industrial connectivity experts. That That's not going away. That is still what we do. And, you know, we've got our Kepler Edge product. It's newer. Um, it's containerized. It's in a new environment. More than happy to help out. Or if you're lucky, you have someone like Logic in your backyard who knows both of these companies and both of these products pretty well. So they're going to be able to go in and really help consult you on what the best solution uh, can be at the end of the day. Um, so with that, kind of wrapping up here, um, thank you both. Um, this has been a lot of fun. I know that's kind of weird coming from a webinar, but it's always a, a, a neat discussion to talk about some of these things. Um, so, Carolyn, I'm actually going to turn it over to you. Do we have any any questions or, or anything we want to ask here? No, actually, we I think you guys have covered it. Oh, actually, let's see. There is one question. Um, what collateral exists that explains the operational benefits of combining ThingWorks Edge and ZTC Edge together in a containerized environment? So have we have we created anything yet? We are working on that. Um, so it sounds like, and Barry, keep me honest here, I believe we're working on sort of a, not necessarily a white paper, but I guess we were calling it like a solution brief that will walk through some of those benefits. Is that, that correct, Barry? Yeah, so yeah, exactly, Kyle. We've, we've completed the testing um, and now what we're gonna be doing is taking sort of the results of that testing, be able to document it, um, describe the solution, you know, the, the, you know, the, the kind of one plus one plus one plus one equals three benefits. Um, mm -hmm. and. I think that should be hopefully available, you know, in the coming uh, weeks um, and, and available, I think on both both websites. Okay, awesome. And Barry, I actually, I do have a question for you. Um, I think Dave had asked this in one of our prep meetings, but I think it's important to bring up. Can you just high level uh, talk about the differences between your traditional FT server um, and the ZTC edge? Sure, um, yeah, so, you know, we, ac we actually have, I stress we have four different product lines um, and, you know, as I said earlier, we, we sort of span many different industries, industrial and non-industrial. I would say our ZTC Edge and FT Server are primarily our platforms that serve, you know, in the industrial markets. You know, what differentiates them, um, it, you know, it, it depends on um, what the customer is looking for. Um, FT Server is more of a traditional rack mount server. It has a hardware-based um, fault tolerance solution. It supports... Um, Open, open operating systems like Windows, VMware, uh, Red Hat Linux. Um, it delivers no downtime um, and it's really best in class uh, in, in sort of its category. Um, ZTC Edge is more of an industrial kind of PC type of uh, form factor. 
it's more ruggedized. It can go down on a plant floor. It can be uh, deployed, you know, even within a machine, within an enclosure. Um, you know, we, we actually package it with our own um, virtualization platform and base operating system um, that we as Stratus um, have developed and, uh, and, and, you know, support um, with, with our products. Um, and, you know, I would say there's, there's some additional benefits there that, that you get from some of the flexibility and integration between the hardware and software. Um, but obviously with a scaled down solution, it's a little bit less expensive. It also has, uh, I'd say less, some of, less, less of the recovery time objectives um, than you see with FD server. Um, but both have their, 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 um, their places um, and use cases. And in some cases, uh, both are used for the same use case, <laughs> which, is, which is always uh, you know, part of the fun. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. And uh, if there's, Carolyn, any, any other questions from the chat here? No, I think that we're good. I think we answered them while you guys were, while you guys were talking, it's great. I did see, awesome. uh, this Dave, is Dave, I did just want to mention, uh, you know, somebody had asked about store and forward on the chat and I had to pull up the uh, ThingWorks Kepware Edge manual just to see, you know, MQTT on store and forward supports 100,000 data updates that are buffered um, for that store and forward. So if you're really uh, looking for, you know, robustness, I feel like that kind of, uh, that capability just in, in the Kepware Edge solution seems awesome. So just wanted to mention that is it, as it was a question and I didn't know the answer. Awesome, yeah, thank you. And, and I, that is a great point. I, and I do want to make sure we're, we're being clear here too. So, um, so the Kepware Edge, that component you're talking about is part of our IoT gateway. Um, and that IoT gateway, as Dave, you know, as you said, has that buffer of 100,000 events. Um, I wanna make sure that we're, we're clear here that doesn't necessarily mean it's store and forward. In, in our case, store and forward, you know, is, hey, we're actually writing to disk somewhere where if that device shuts off, uh, you have that saved into memory. That buffer, yeah, it will stay within sort of the, the, um, the we'll say in the memory, but if you shut that down, you're going to be losing that data. Yeah, so I did say it is memory, a type of yeah. store and forward, but yes, so. It's a great point. Just wanted to make sure we're we're uh, we're clear on that. That being said, um, you know the ThingWorks always on protocol does support store and forward, so we can do that. We can write to disk um, from Kepware Edge, and then additionally, if you're looking at traditional Kepware, um, you know the Kep Server EX, the data logger has the store and forward capabilities, as does again the the ThingWorks always on uh, protocol. You have the ability to uh, save to disk. So great, great point. Um, well, awesome. Well, again, thank you both. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you, everyone, for, for listening in. And uh, the recording will be sent out if you want to listen again um, in a couple of days after this is done. So thank you all for coming. And uh, thank you again to the panelists. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for hosting, Barry. Great to uh, be part of this. So appreciate it. Take care. Yeah, great. Great to chat with you guys. Thank you very much. All right, have a great day, everyone.